Hi there, all my happy painters. How are you doing today? I'm doing great because I get to paint with you. Today we're gonna to be painting Sailboat, and if you're ready to paint, let's set sail. Today we're gonna to be starting with our simple colors. We've got white and black, blue, yellow, and red. And that's all we need today to create our swift sailboat. We're gonna start by painting the sky, and then the water, and then the trees, and then we'll finish up with our sailboat. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start out by using my medium-sized brush. This is my medium brush. Your medium brush might be different, and that's okay. Any brush will work. So what we're gonna start out with is we're gonna mix a little bit of color. I'm gonna rinse my brush off so it's nice and fresh and ready to roll. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of white and a tiny little bit of blue. I'm gonna make a really light blue color. Just like that. I might need a little bit more, but I can make more as I go. What we're gonna start doing first is painting our clouds. And the way we're gonna paint our clouds is really simple. We're gonna use a shape that we all are very familiar with. It's a circle. So I'm gonna start right up here, and I'm gonna start painting some circles. And they don't have to be perfect. No cloud is perfect. And that's what makes them perfect, is being imperfect. And I'm just gonna paint a whole bunch of circles, almost like I'm painting grapes. I'm just gonna kind of make a little line of them coming down like this. And I'm gonna, I can do some bigger ones. It's good to do different sizes. We wanna show a little bit of differences in our circles. And I'm gonna come down almost all the way to the bottom. And even if you go a little further, that's okay because we can always paint over it. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch brushes. If you have a bigger brush, you can do this too. If you don't, you can use the same brush you were using before. I'm gonna make a little bit more of that color. Let me bring this over. A little bit more of this color. It's the same color. It might be a little bit different than what you used before, but that's okay. It doesn't have to match exactly. Next, I'm just gonna fill in my clouds. And right now, they're a little bit blue, and that's okay. That's what we want. And I'm just gonna fill in this area. And if you're using a smaller brush, that's okay. It's gonna take a little bit more time. And if you need to pause the video so you can get all this done and get caught up, please do. If you need to have mom or dad help, or a friend or a brother or sister help you pause it, just ask for help. It's good to ask for help. Almost done with the clouds. Yeah, that looks perfect for now. The next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and use still a mixture of blue and white. I want this to be if we did this whole sky that blue without adding white to it, it would look like a nighttime scene, and that would be really cool too. In fact, maybe if you wanna try doing this painting again with another canvas, you could try a nighttime scene. I'm just gonna take a little bit more blue, and I really wanna think about what color is the sky on a nice sunny day. There, it's a little bit darker than my clouds, and that's exactly what I want. Now you might want to use your, your medium sized brush to start because you, what you want to do is trace our clouds. And 
And even if you get a little bit carried away and maybe that brush stroke goes up a little bit further, that's okay. Nothing you can do right now is wrong because it's your painting. There. I traced most of it. Let me trace more. Oh, I went a little further. That's okay. I think that's going to look neat. Now, very carefully, I'm going to start filling in. Now, I am going to switch to my bigger brush in just a minute to make it a little bit easier. But right now, while we're working around our clouds, I'm using a smaller brush so I have a little bit more control with what I'm doing. I'm just getting in all these little triangles where the circles come together. And I'm putting paint right in there. There we go. How about that? That wasn't too bad, was it? Praise yourself. Look at me. I am the cloud painter and painter of skies. Great job. All right, that's good. Now I'm going to switch now to my bigger brush because I want to make this get filled in much faster. Everything we do in this painting is going to be really simple, basic shapes that we all are familiar with. We started with our circles. We're going to do some triangles in a little bit. Yeah, actually, we're going to do a lot of triangles, and that's a fun shape to do. It has three sides and three spots where those sides come together. I think you guys know what a triangle looks like. What's your favorite kind of triangle? Mine's a tortilla chip. I really like to have a tortilla chip with some salsa on it, or maybe guacamole if that's what you like. What's another kind of triangle we can think of? Mountains are kind of like triangles. Kind of, a little bit different. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep filling it in. Now what happens sometimes is when we start painting and we're moving around like this, our brush kind of starts to stick to the canvas a little bit and that's the brush telling us, hey, I need a little bit of a bath. So I'm gonna rinse my brush off once in a while. You'll feel it, it starts to stick. I'm going to dry it off on a paper towel. Pat, 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 pat. Get all that water off. Because I want to have a dry brush when I start again. So here we go. And now we're just going to start keeping this color going. And you know what? It's okay if it's not all perfectly blue. If you get a little bit of extra white in some spots, maybe that's just some other clouds that are further away that we can't quite see the shapes of. Or maybe it's a rainstorm off in the distance. I guess that would still be clouds though, wouldn't it? But not on this day. This is our happy sailing day. No rain here. And I am actually going to go ahead and just fill the whole rest of my canvas using blue and white. It's about half and half. Half of it's blue, half of it's white when I mix it together. I get one different color, a lighter blue or a bluish white, however you want to look at it. And I know sometimes this takes a, it feels like it takes a long time to do and it's a lot of work and your hand gets tired. And if you need to pause it, Rest your hand and relax. Go for it. Take all the time you need. But don't forget about your painting. We want to finish it. I like that this has some different variation to the sky. I think it looks good, so I add a little bit more. If you like yours all blue, good for you. You can do whatever you want.
that's the beauty of painting is we can make the world look however we imagine it might look. If you wanted to do a yellow sky, you could. If you wanted to do a red sky, you could. There's an old saying about red skies when it comes to sailing. It used to be red skies at night, sailors delight, red skies and morn, sailors he'd warn. And what that meant was, if there's a red sky at night, the rain is coming at night. If there's a red sky in the morning, it means the rain's coming during the day, the storm. And so you might well just want to stay home and not go fishing that day. I bet most of you have a favorite place you go where maybe you see sailboats. Maybe it's a lake, maybe it's the ocean, maybe it's a bay. Why don't you have one of your parents comment, or you can, in the comment section below and let me know. Where's your favorite place to go and see sailboats? Where I live in the Pacific Northwest, there's a wonderful place called Hood River. And it is the windsurf capital of the world. Which windsurfing is kind of like little sailboats, but instead of being on a boat, it's on like a surfboard. And now people attach big kites. And they go and attach big kites and then they have kind of like a little surfboard they attach to their feet and they sail by the, they surf along on the river with the power of the wind and sometimes they themselves will jump and go way up in the sky because the kite will pull them up and it's all, they do all kinds of fun tricks and that's really cool to watch. All right, so we've got our clouds painted and we can maybe make some adjustments to our clouds later um, it's really easy to add more in uh, for right now I'm just gonna leave it like that and see where it goes sometimes it's best even if you think maybe I don't like these clouds it's best to just leave them and see what happens when we paint everything else a lot of times what happens is we feel like oh actually I really like my clouds the way they are I'm glad I left them the way they are so with that in mind, what we're going to do next is we are going to go ahead and we're going to put in our row of trees. And let me show you where those what those look like on our finished painting. Here's our finished painting. And we can see we've got two different colors of trees. We've kind of got two rows of them. We've got some in the foreground, which is in front, and some in the background, which is behind. And we're going to start off by painting the ones that are in the front because we're kind of doing this in a way almost like the way a cartoon would be painted where everything's kind of got very specific shapes and definition to them. Definition means we can see the outlines and we want to really get these front ones showing up really well and then we'll fill the back ones in be behind. Now in order to paint these I'm again going to use my medium size brush and I'm gonna make sure I rinse it really good. Although, we are gonna be using green, and we don't have green on our palette, so how are we gonna do this? We're gonna to have to make green. Well, green's a really easy color to make when we've got these colors available to us. The colors we're gonna use are a little bit of blue, yellow, and then I wanna use white to add to it because I don't want it to be very dark for the foreground, the front trees. So I'm gonna start off with a little tiny bit of blue. All right. Put a little dot of it right there. I'm gonna take some yellow, and I'm gonna be careful, I'm gonna get my yellow out of the very edge of my puddle of yellow so I don't get a bunch of blue right in the middle. And it's more yellow than blue. But I want you to use your own eyes and say, I like it this color. There we go, I added a little bit of, maybe too much white. Let's go a little bit more blue again. A little bit more yellow again. There we go. That's what I want. Yeah, I like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out where's my furthest tree out this way gonna be. And I want it to be right about maybe a third. So if I were to take this canvas and make it into three sections, each section is called a third. So I'm gonna say about a third of the way in from the side, and maybe about a third of the way in from the top. And I'm gonna start making my trees. I'm gonna paint a little triangle, and then a bigger triangle, 
and then a bigger triangle. And you could maybe do, some of our trees will do a little taller, so maybe we'll do four or five triangles. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this in. And it doesn't stand out really bold right now, but we're gonna do some extras to it a little bit later. Now I'm gonna move over a little bit. I'm gonna start a little higher. And you can put a little bit of a swoop to your triangles if you want, a little scoop. Or you can just do straight sides too. One, two, three. One, two, three. And this one's gonna have to just get a little bit bigger. I want them to just barely touch or have a little tiny gap, but I kind of want the bottom edge. In fact, let's do this. Let's go ahead and paint a little line right across. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, just like that. That's gonna be where all of our trees are attached. So let's go ahead and let's do another one, maybe a little taller. And let's actually start at the bottom. There's that. One, two, three, three sides. One, two, three. We're just gonna keep doing three sides and they just get a little bit smaller as they go up. And I like my trees to all be a little bit different in height. So this, lot, this one right here, I'm gonna put one more triangle on top and they just get a little smaller each time. And I'm just gonna keep going all the way across. Let's just cook right through this. You can start at the top, you can start at the bottom. Starting at the bottom might be easier for you because you might have a, might be easier to figure out where the next tree is going to be. So I'll do this next one from the bottom. Bump, 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 one, two, three. I'm getting hungry for chips and salsa now with all these triangles flying all over the place. And just keep going. And you can do these bigger if you want. You can do them smaller if you want. No matter what you choose, it's the right way to do it because it's your painting. So I'm kind of going back and forth. Some of these have three triangles. Some of them have four. I don't think I'm going to do any with five. Maybe I could if I wanted to. It's up to you. If you need to mix a little bit more paint, you can. And we're just using this light green color for now. You know what, I think I am gonna do one tree with five triangles. It's gonna be right here on this side. You can do this too if you want. You don't have to. Mine's going a little bit crooked, but you know what, that's okay. There are crooked trees outside. Just look, use your own eyes. See what you see, not what you think you see. Is that tree straight? Sometimes. Is it crooked? Sometimes. They're both perfect no matter what. That's just the way they grew. I like that one with the fifth. All right. So I'm gonna rinse my brush again. Now, I didn't leave myself a ton of room for the sailboat, but that's okay. The sailboat can be anywhere down in here and it can go as tall as it needs to. Now, before we go too far, I wanna take a little tiny bit of that color that we just used, and I'm just going to scribble some of this color into the water very lightly, just a little bit. So just grab a little tiny bit from your canvas or your palette. Maybe you're using a paper plate, whatever you're working works. 
whatever you're using works. That's what I meant to say. Sometimes I say things I didn't mean to say, but you knew what I meant. And all this is, it's like when we look in a mirror, it's a little bit of reflection of the green into the water. So we know it's water. There we go. That's all we need, not a lot. What I wanna do next is we're gonna put our trees that go in behind it. Now these trees can be a little bit taller, they can be a little bit shorter, it's up to you. But we're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna mix some green. I'm gonna start with my blue and some yellow. And this time, I'm gonna use a little bit more yellow. This time I'm not gonna add white to it. I'm gonna let it be this darker color. And this is gonna help these trees that are in front show up better. So again, I'm using my medium brush. I don't need a lot of paint on the brush and I might only be getting the top part of my triangle. So there's one and that's all I'm gonna get. And I'm gonna fill it in. And if you get a little bit sloppy and overlap a little bit, that's okay. We're going to do some stuff to fix that stuff. There's one. I think it's kind of probably good to do a couple that have a little bit more definition so that we know, hey, these are other trees. They're just a little bit different color. And I can see that now by having a little bit of a triangle sticking up. If you want to use a smaller brush to do this, you can. Maybe you want to put a little bit of a, top, a peak tip on the tree. That helps always. There we go. So let's go right here. And just fill in these gaps. It's okay if you see little bits of sky, because if you've ever gone for a walk in the woods, you see the sky shine through sometimes. These trees aren't solid, they have lots of branches. This is gonna be a good one right here. There's a triangle. Another triangle. We really see that these are trees hanging out behind here. And this one I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in. There we go. Now we're gonna add some shadow on these back trees a little bit later. So they're gonna get even a little bit darker and the trees in front of them are gonna get a little bit brighter because we're gonna put a highlight on those. There's one triangle, two triangles. Ooh, this one might, we might get three triangles in on this one. Look at that. Three triangles. I like to think these ones are just a little bit darker because they're back more in the shadows of the woods. And this one I'm gonna go a little, I want this one to be a little bit shorter. There's that. One, two, and that's all we're gonna get. Just a hint of two. And just to do one more little, let's go a little bit taller. Let's do three right here. One, two, and I guess it just disappears into two because we know that the other parts are hidden. And again, I know right now, this little bit of this painting looks a little bit weird. It's kind of ugly at this point. Well, maybe ugly is not the right word. Ugly is not a good word to use ever, really. It just doesn't look like the way we think it should look, but it'll get there. All right, I'm sure you're all doing great. And I hope that you take the time when you're done to have somebody help you email us a picture of this to our website at gobox.com. We love to see it when you guys share the paintings with us. All right, so I'm gonna rinse my brush really well, my medium brush. Because what I'm going to do next is I want it to be really super clean and dry because we're going to work on our clouds again. 
Now for the clouds, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just white paint and make sure I don't have any drips of water on my brush. So make sure you get it nice and dry and really clean because we're using white paint. We don't want any of those, those other colors coming in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start outlining little bits of my clouds. And you can come back with your brush and just kind of give it a little dipsy do, tapsy too, right along the edge if you want to. Or you can just keep it with the circles. The circles look good too. And you can do them anywhere you want in your clouds. I'm going to give this a little dipsy do, tapsy too, there. You can add a little bit more white if you want. Sometimes I kind of use the side of my brush a little bit. I'm going to show you a fun little trick we're going to do too. See, I'm actually making these a little bit bigger than just the outline. You can come through and create some other little circles as you go. And they don't have to be perfect circles. Perfect circle is one of the hardest things you can possibly try to paint or draw. That just gives us the idea that maybe there's more clouds, there's a lot more going on here. That's kind of what we want. There we go. I like the way that looks. Now I do want to put a little bit of some of this white down in where our water is because we've got some reflection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some white paint. I'm going to get a little bit of my brush and I'm just going to pat most of it off onto, this, onto the palette. And right about here, I'm just going to very lightly whisk, 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 whisk. You can probably hear the brush going squish, 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 squish. And if you want to make the sound effect, go for it. Sometimes making sound effects makes painting more fun. Swish, 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 swish. Just go for it. Whatever makes you feel happy when at this point. Yeah, I'm happy with that. You can go all the way up to the bottom of your clouds if you want to. So we don't know how far back this lake or ocean goes. We just kind of have water and sky and it's all there together. All right. So the next thing I want to do is we're going to clean off our medium sized brush. You can use your smallest brush if you want, but I like to use the medium one for this. We're going to put some highlights on our trees that are in the front. So I'm just going to take a little bit of yellow, our daffodil yellow. And on the right hand side of each of my little triangles, I'm just going to paint a little line right on top of the green, just like that. And you can see it helps it stand out a little bit more. And sometimes you're going to get a lot of yellow and sometimes just a little bit. As long as it shows up a little bit, it's doing its job. Sometimes you might get a little bit clunky with it, and that's okay. And clunky means maybe your line got a little bit, a little bit more uh, wide, and that's good. That shows a little bit of difference, and difference looks good on paintings. It's how it looks like it's nature instead of a perfect garden. 
Nothing wrong with perfect gardens either. If you want to have a perfect garden, that's up to you. That's just a little bit of yellow. On the right hand side, each of these. Now I am gonna use my smaller brush now. I'm gonna go for my smallest brush and make sure it's nice and clean. And I'm gonna use just a little bit of our blue and we're gonna do the shadows on the trees in the back. And all I'm gonna do with that is kind of paint a little tiny bit of blue on the left-hand side of each of these trees. Kind of like we just did with our yellow. But I also want to kind of come down a little bit further and get a little bit of it down in the middle in between these trees so that we know this is back in the shadows. But if all you do is just do a little bit on the left All you need to do so we've done triangles and circles we've done lines we've done shadows and highlights we've done water and sky we've done clouds which are water vapor we've got all kinds of fun stuff going on in this painting and in just a minute, we're going to work on our sailboat. So just be very careful that you don't get too far crazy with these blue parts of these trees. But as I said before, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. If you want to paint your trees red, you can do it. Might look a little bit like a forest fire if you did, but that's okay. You can paint whatever you want. All right, guys, it's time. We are going to start working on our sailboat. We want to let all of this other part dry. So at first, what we're going to do is we're just going to do our outline of our sailboat. And we're going to start off by doing it with black. And the reason I like to do it with black is whatever color we choose to paint on top of the black once it's dry works better than trying to paint white first and then try to cover everything that's underneath. So I'm going to start out. I'm going to use, let's use our smallest brush to do this. Now you can make your sailboat as big or small as you want. I feel like the original painting, let me show you our original here. I feel like maybe the sailboat's a little bit too close to the very middle of the canvas. And I think sometimes it looks a little bit better if it's off what they call off center. So here's the center. If we move it off one direction, right and left or right, it becomes off center. And I think because we've got these neat clouds going on over here, I think it might look neat if we off-center our sailboat a little bit to the left. Now, one of the things that gets a little bit frustrating when we paint is we've painted all these trees, and now I'm going to ask you to paint a sailboat over some of those trees. And I know you feel like, hey, I just painted all those trees. I don't want to paint over them. But that's what we're going to do, and in the end, it'll be okay because it's easier to go ahead and paint those trees now or earlier when we are working on them than it is to try to think, where's the sailboat gonna be and where can I paint the trees so that they're not in the way? And honestly, when you go out and you look at a lake and a sailboat sails past, the trees don't move for the sailboat. The sailboat just blocks a little bit of it. So let's go ahead and paint our sailboat. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of black and I'm going to go about halfway. So if I were to say, here's my shoreline here, and here's the bottom of my canvas, 
if I were to pick a spot in the middle, it's right about here. I'm going to go up just a little bit from there, and I'm going to start with a black line. This is the top edge of my sailboat, and it's going to scoop. I'm going to let it scoop up a little bit more on the front. My boat's going to go that way. Now, it's almost like I'm painting a little bit of a banana. Kind of a thin one, because we're going to see part of this is going to be hidden by the water. Just a scoop. It's kind of like a little bit of a smiley face. And if you want to use this a little bit bigger brush to fill this in, you can. Otherwise, this brush works fine. I'm just a little tiny bit off center of my canvas. So there's the basic shape of what they call the hull, H-U-L-L, -L, of the sailboat, which is the part you sit in when you go sailing. Now we're going to paint what's called the mast, and the mast is the big pole that the sail attaches to. And it's usually pretty close to the middle, maybe a little bit forward of the middle of the boat. And I'm just going to put mine right about here. And I'm actually going to use my medium brush for this. So I don't have to do a bunch, a lot of brush strokes. I can just do one brush stroke. And it's a little bit at an angle because the boat's going fast. And I'm going to take this all the way up into the sky taller than the trees, unless you've got really tall trees, just like that. That's perfect. Now what else does our boat need? Well, it needs a sail. And usually boats have two sails. They have one in the front, and I don't know what they're called, but maybe you could do some reading about them yourselves and find out what these sails are called. But one that catches the wind, and it usually kind of scoops out because it's filling with the wind blowing in from this side. And I'm going to fill this in with black. See this little tree? Sorry tree, you're still there, but you're being hidden by the sail right now. Thank you for being there while we were learning how to paint trees though. I still see a little bit of that tree hanging out right there, so we'll try to leave him showing when we do our other sail. And I'm filling it in with black because then I can paint any other color over it once it dries. Don't need a lot of paint on this. We just want just enough to just lightly cover what's behind. If you see a little bit of color coming through, that's okay. It's not going to hurt it. Now the other sail, that's usually on a sailboat, is a trailing sail, and I don't know what its function is. I wish I did, but maybe if, again, you guys could read on your, yourself and find out what is that sail at the back. And this one is usually a little bit smaller, and it goes at an angle. We're going to co cover part of that tree. But this is more of a triangle, and I'm leaving a little bit of gap between the main sail and this sail. And if anybody knows what it is, Please leave a comment. I am not a sailor, I'm a painter, so I don't know all the names for all the parts on the boat, and that's okay. Maybe somebody does know them and they can comment down below and then I will know. And I know there's a little bit of a rope that goes up here and there's probably one that goes over here somewhere. So we'll just put one in there so it just doesn't feel detached. We lost a little bit of that tree. Sorry, tree. We know you're still there. All right. Now I always feel like the other thing a boat, sailboat needs is it needs a little flag. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a wiggly triangle up here. Just like this. Now, what we are going to need to do 
So we're gonna need to make sure all of that is all dry before we paint our color on. So we're gonna work on some other stuff and if we get done and that's still wet, probably what we'll wanna do, actually, you know what I wanna do before I get going too far? I am going to make my boat just a little bit longer this way. There we go. It is really a swift sailboat, that's for sure. But what we're gonna do is while we wait for that paint to dry, we're gonna keep using black and we're gonna use our smallest paintbrush. We're gonna rinse and dry. You hear this little ching, ching, ching noise? That's me cleaning my brush in my little water cup and I'm drying it on my paper towel. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of black and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna outline all of my trees. So I'm gonna start with this tree And what I'm doing is rather than outlining the triangles so much, I'm just going, coming down the side. And then just giving a little flip back. Now you can always come back. I lost a little bit of yellow when I did that. If you decide you wanna come back with more yellow, you can do that, but wait till your painting, wait till the black dries. And I'm trying not to push down too hard, but if I do, that's okay. When I push down harder, what I get is thicker lines, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm gonna do this on all the trees, so even the ones in the back. And if you wanna start on the left and work to the right, you can do that, and that might even be better, because then your hand's not maybe touching the wet paint. Don't forget to do the little details where the on the trees in the background, even though you can't see them, the whole tree behind the boat. I want to make sure that we still pretend that they're there if we can see it at all. Like this one right here. See, tree, we remembered you. And all you did while we were learning how to paint trees. And I'm dipping a lot because I don't want to have a lot of paint on my brush at one time. I just want little bits. Just keep painting along. I know sometimes it, doing all these little lines can be a little bit frustrating because it's doing the same thing over and over again. And if you need to take a break and go get a glass of water or a snack, go ahead and do so. Just remember, pause the video, come back and finish it up. go almost done two more trees to go and I think what we also want to do is we want to put a little shoreline on this when we get done with this one two one two I like to count sometimes when I'm painting because it keeps my mind practiced. Practiced on math. Which is important sometimes when we start getting into more complicated painting stuff, we need to use math. All right, so the other thing I wanna do is I wanna put a little shoreline. So I'm gonna take my brush 
And I'm not going to be real precise. I'm not going to draw a straight line. I'm going to draw a little bit of a wiggly line. Because... Shorelines aren't perfectly straight because there's water and rocks and trees and stumps and all kinds of things along the shore that change where the shoreline might be. So once we get done with our outlining of our trees and our shoreline, we're going to start adding some waves, but we're maybe in a lake. So the waves aren't going to be real big. So I want to make sure that we aren't doing giant surfer waves. We're just doing some little waves that are maybe being caused by some wind or by the sailboat itself. And so I'm going to use my small brush and I'm going to be careful because I want to make sure that my boat is dry before I paint on my boat itself. So if you need to pause the video and have a parent help you with the hair dryer and dry your boat real quick. That would be a good thing to do right now. And then once it's dry, come right on back and we'll get all finished up. Okay, so I like to do some little ripples in the water and you can do some too, but I just like to take a little bit of white on my small brush and just throw some jaggedy little lines across. I don't want to do a lot, just a few. Now, I do like to put in I'm going to put some waves that come up a little bit over the edge of my boat and I'm just going to do a little curl. So all I do for a little curl is it's like I'm painting a little wave come up and then like a little curly cue come up. Now this is where you want to make sure your paint is dry. Mine wasn't perfectly dry right there. I got a little bit of black paint on my brush. So I'm just going to let that sit there and move on. But I'm going to wipe off my brush, make sure I don't have any of that black brush, black paint left. I'm gonna go ahead and go up and do my next one. And this is the water that I think is the boat as it's pushing along through the water. It's pushing that, this water off to the side and it's creating these little waves. And then maybe, maybe there's another little wave that's pushed out further behind it. Just like so. And I'm gonna to need to fill in some of those waves because I kind of went up and over the black and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my medium sized brush again because this is actually my favorite brush in, that we used. We didn't use it as much today as I normally would but it is my favorite brush because I can do a lot of little things and I can do a lot of big things with it without having to wonder which brush should I use. So I'm gonna go ahead and just brush in some fresh blue and if I see some of that black paint come up with it I'm just gonna remember oops let's wait a couple more minutes or let's use the hair dryer real quick and even if a little bit of black gets in there that's okay too can always touch things up. There is no mistake we can't fix and there's really nothing really such a thing as a mistake. I'm going to take a little bit of blue and put it in underneath my waves. And it's just the blue by itself. And maybe kind of scribble it in. And you can take some more of these little a little bit of blue. I'm still using this medium sized brush and you can throw some streaks into the water. Create some darker sh shadows because if there's ripples there's going to be shadows. So just like so. And I might, I'll probably come back when we get done painting our boat and touch all of this up. 
So what color should we do our boat? Well, we have a lot of green and blue in our painting and a little bit of yellow, but what we don't have in, and we've got lots of white and we do have some black, but what we don't have is any red. So you can choose to do, maybe you'll do your sail red, which I think is what I'm gonna do today. I think on the original painting, I don't think, I know it's right here. My original painting, I did a white sail on the front and a yellow sail at the back. And I think what I wanna do this time is I want to still use a white sail. I'm gonna use the back sail as white this time and the front one is red. And the reason I'm gonna do that is I think that'll show up a little bit better against our trees. And then I think we will see what, maybe we'll make a new color. Maybe we'll do a purple set, uh, flag on the top or something like that. But let's go ahead and I'm gonna rinse off my medium sized brush. I do want to go ahead and do this main big pushing wind sail. And I'm gonna leave a little bit, leave the mask showing, but I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in with red. And I think this is gonna be a lot more exciting to look at than our original painting. It might be, it might not. And if you don't wanna use red, you don't have to use red. You can use any color you want. Oh, I like the red against the green though. I think typically in real sailing, this sail is usually white. But you know what? This is my painting. This is my sailboat. I want a red sail on it. Now it's not gonna always feel real solid, meaning you're still gonna see some brush marks and stuff, but you know, brush marks is, are what make a painting a painting. So it's totally okay for there to be brush marks. So I think what I want to do is, let's do a, I'm gonna go ahead and do a purple sail, uh, the back sail. So I'm gonna mix together a little bit of blue, and I'm gonna go a little bit more lavender with it. So a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, and some white. There we go. There we go. Maybe a little bit more of a reddish color. If you don't want to use purple, use whatever color you want. Maybe orange would be good. And for orange, you'd just do red and yellow together. Maybe you just want to do another blue or a white sail. That's fine too. It's your painting, so you can do whatever you want. That's the awesome thing about painting. It's always whatever you want it to be. Let's see, what color should I make? the hull of the boat. Maybe that would be a good spot to have yellow, a little bit more of a bold pop of yellow. And I can tell that my black is dry now. So I can do yellow. And sometimes it's kind of funny, yellow on top of black just looks blue. Maybe you want to use a smaller brush for this. It's up to you. And maybe you want to do more than one coat. Now coat is known as an application. So you can put the yellow on, wait a few minutes for it to dry. That's your first coat. It's just like putting a coat on. And then once it's dry, you can do a second coat. And sometimes what I'll do is when I'm doing the first coat is I'll add a little bit of white to my yellow. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now. So I, there we go, a little bit of white helps. 
Yellow sometimes can be a little bit what they call translucent, which means you can kind of see through it a little bit. So I'm just going to put that little bit of white in there too. It's about 50%, you know, one part of yellow, one part of white. And then what I'll do is I'm going to wait for that to dry a little bit and then I'll come back in just a minute and I'm going to add some yellow on top and then that'll really get us that really bright yellow color. And I think for our flag on top, uh, I don't want to do blue, so maybe what we could do is we could do red and white stripes. How about that? Let's do that. Get a little bit of red. Paint some stripes on. And you can do whatever you want up here. If you were doing purple, you want to leave it black, you can do that too. If you wanted to get real creative, you could make your flag be a big square flag and make it a pirate flag. It's all good. Now let's take a little bit of white. Now I want a candy cane for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I just painted a flag that looks like a candy cane. All right, we're almost done, everybody. You're doing a great job. I can't see you, but I can tell. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow now, and I'm going to go ahead and use my smallest brush. And I'm just going to brush in a little bit of yellow on top of this that I already painted, just to give it a little bit more bright yellow feel. And like I said, I've got a little bit of touch up to do on my water right down here. A little bit of fresh blue. A little bit of fresh white. The very last thing we want to do with this is we want to make sure we sign our painting. Now remember, our painting is what people are looking at and our name is just something to tell people that we did it. So I'm just going to take a little bit of white and I'm going to do my initials right here. Just really small. And it's important to do that part, but remember, this is the important part of the painting. If you want to do your name bigger, you can. It's up to you. And I am all done. So thanks for painting with me today. We went sailing. Who thought they were going to go sailing today? I did because I knew we were going to be painting this. But if you had a great time or if you're just stumbling across us and you've never seen what we do before, make sure you like the video, subscribe to our channel, and if you're interested in picking up this art kit or many other art kits that we have available, go to gobox.com, G-O-G-H-B-O-X.com. My name's Paul, I had a great time painting with you. We'll see you next time.